Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. It is Wednesday, June 3rd, and we are going to be painting our um, two cow patterns that I have. I'm Ashley Amick with Yard RS, and I'm excited to have you guys here with me. Give me just one second, I gotta get everything pulled up on my end. Hello, as you're hopping in, say hello. Let me know that you're there. I hope everybody's doing well. I got you a, a bit of a different angle, so I'm hoping to have a um, look. I already got wet paint on me, or smearing wet paint. Uh, I'm hoping that this will be a better angle for everybody to see what we're going to be doing today. I'm gonna use a couple of different brushes we've never used before, so actually just one new one yeah so hey debbie how are you hon i'm so glad that you're here to hang out with me i don't know how the weather is down there but it was kind of yucky up here it finally cleared out but when i was in pearland earlier i left and it was uh, clear skies and then i got to i don't know downtown and it was pouring rain all the way through um conroe so, hope everybody's dry. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to think of what I need at the very beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and just hop on in. I showed you guys, I think y'all could see behind me, my two um, patterns that I did for you guys on, uh, earlier today. I wanted you guys to see what our end, end result was going to look like. So, I already have two of them base coated for us that are dry. So I'm actually gonna move these out of our way so that we can base coat together and then we can move on to shading and uh, outlining. So I'm gonna just go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be switching back and forth between the two patterns when I have the same color on my brush. So I'm gonna start right off at the bat with my pink. Um, I have to work with the shading that I did inside of the ears, excuse me, the hair like kind of parts that I did. I have to actually do that while it's wet. So we're going to just hit that right here at the beginning. So I'm going to actually have a couple of wet brushes at the same time. I'm, I'm going to have my regular Cotman mop brush. And then as soon as I get that down, I'm going to be using a, a flat, uh, a flat wash brush or a flat shader. Oh no, Debbie can't hear. Can anybody hear me? Do I need to? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to do to check check my sound. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. If you're in here and you can hear me, will you let me know? Or if you can't hear me, will you let me know? I hate that when you guys can't hear. It did that to me whenever Victoria was on her live and uh, I couldn't hear a thing and I kept exiting out, coming back in. I even deleted the app, put the app back on, turned my phone off. Okay, Phaedra can hear. So Debbie, try to maybe go out and, um, and uh, refresh and then come back in. Thank you, Phaedra, for letting me know. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Right now, I'm gonna be using my light pink, uh, number 25. I actually have my color list tonight, so I can make sure to give you the correct uh, colors. So light pink, number 25, and I'm using that just in the center of uh, the ears. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it kind of put down, and we're base coating with our Cotman brush, just as we always do. That part is the same. So I'm just making sure I'm getting my edges with that pink. And now when I'm doing this part on my base coat, I'm making sure that I don't have too much paint because I'm about to come right over this while it's wet with more paint. So I want it to be as few strokes as possible or stroke lines as possible because this is impossible to do um, when you're go ahead and you're shading over wet paint for you to not see strokes. You're gonna see strokes. Uh, so I want this paint to be not on the thinner side, but definitely not thick, right in the middle on the cusp so I'm gonna sorry you guys I got a call I'm gonna show you a pair of these together and then I'll switch to the next cow and I'll do the same on that one 
So, just making sure I'm getting those signs right quick. All right, now I'm just gonna set this one aside. I, uh, we're gonna come right back to it right quick. I usually don't set wet brushes aside because you know it's, it's easy to forget, but I have to do this. So the next color I'm gonna use, it's actually light pink mixed with a touch of shading pink. Um, that's how I actually mixed this and, and then added some water, but I'm trying to make a color that's in between my two pinks. I only have two different variations of pink. So when I want another color, I just mix the two and kind of get myself a nice little medium in between. Maybe a dab more of the fuchsia. I do already have some of this pre-mixed uh, for myself, but I wanted to kind of show you guys what that would look like. It's just a color in between your light and your uh, dark or your shading pink. So all I'm gonna do, oh, first off, I need to shake it because I just squirted that all over me. But all I need to do is uh, get a little bit in my cup right here. Because my brush is about to get wet with the other pink paint, uh, I don't need a whole lot of this because it's gonna end up blending pretty well into my brush. So I'm just really getting a little bit of paint on the tip and I'm coming right up against the back line and kind of fanning it outwards. Now, as you go and the more strokes that you make, the lighter your strokes are gonna become because they're taking in, sorry, that wasn't the best angle, but it's taking in a lot of that wet light pink, that lighter shade. So it's not uh, gonna be the most consistent kind of thing, but this is what I did underneath those dark pink uh, hair-like lines, I did a little bit of this. So if you feel like you got a little too much light pink on there, offload your brush, get a little bit more of this medium pink that we, we mixed up and just come right back over top. Now, because I'm gonna use this piece to keep painting, I'm, I'm gonna clean up my edges whenever I'm getting paint. But you know, if I was taking time in between doing these layers, I wouldn't have to do that. So I'm kind of just feathering it out a little bit with my brush, not, I'm not trying to go too far out. You could honestly do this as close up to the line or as far down as you'd like to go. Um, you know, this is just what I felt comfortable with and what I thought looked good. Let me offload a little bit. I don't like having too much on here. I want this to be a lot of a lighter stroke. So definitely not perfect, but there's the very start of that shading inside of the cow ears. You, if you didn't care for the darker pink um, hairlines, you could always just leave it like this. Uh, now I'm gonna just pull my bandana cow over and do the same thing. So I've got two wet brushes. And just move one and pull the next one back in and I'm gonna just repeat the same exact thing. So I'm gonna start with my mop brush and just base coat a little bit of the light pink uh, number 25. Ooh, thought I had a little boo-boo in there, but that's okay. Making sure to just get my edges. That way the top matches the edges. It's just how I like it to be. repeat the same exact things all over again. I need to make sure I'm keeping in the uh, camera angle for you guys. All right, now my mop brush, I'm gonna go ahead and put up because we're good. So, hey everybody, I'm so glad y'all are here. Hey Deidre, hey mom, hey Connie, hi. Okay, so uh, Deidre, everybody that might, might have just came in, I'm just base coating the ears with my light pink. And then I mixed a pink that is just my light pink and my shading pink together. And I mixed that and I'm just using um, a flat shader. 
or a flat wash. It really doesn't matter. You just need a flat brush. Anything that you have will do. And then I'm just taking a little bit of that pink that I mixed and kind of starting at the upper edge and feathering it downward. Because this pink is, or the light pink is very wet, it's really getting blended in with that color. So your color is gonna look a lot darker on your first stroke or two, but then it's gonna lighten up the more that you pull in some of that light pink in there. You could feather this out as long or short as you want. Now, when this dries, you'll be able to see that contrast a lot better. I'll just clean up my lines a little bit because I do need to come right back in here with black. So that's one side, flip to the other. I'm gonna offload my brush a little bit because it can get a, it can turn to real light pink and I want it to still stay something in between. So just get a little bit, start at my top and kind of feather down. I'm having to focus, so I might be a little quieter than usual. Okay, I think I'm okay with that. So that's just the beginning of my ears and the shading of my ears. I wanted it to look more um, realistic cartoon. Cartoon is still my thing, but I wanted some of the shading lines on, on some animals to look a little bit realer. So I thought I'd try something a little different. So that's what we're doing right now. Now I'm trying to see, yeah, I did do that while I was wet. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna do one more color in the ears. I'm gonna do my, my shading pink. I'm gonna go ahead and do it while it's wet so that it gets blended in there and it doesn't look too um, stark or bold. I don't want it to be particularly bold. I want it to look, you know, a little bit more um, natural. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of pink. Guys, I showed you this brush uh, in one of my videos, I think last week. I got this at Hobby Lobby. This is called a half inch wisp. And this is by uh, actually Royal. It's a Royal brush. So it's a single hanging brush and it was $8, but they had these on sale for half off last week. So I paid $4 and you know, I thought I'd try it out. Well. Sure enough, it works pretty great. So uh, this one is, again, half inch uh, flat wisp by Royal. So I'm gonna just take it, I was actually doing this on my table earlier, not in the cup, so I might even end up squirting it on the table here in a second. I'm loading just a little bit into those tips, right? I'm not trying to pull this up my brush. Then I'm literally offloading. I didn't bring a, um, I did not bring a plate over here, so I'm gonna use my table for offloading. I'm gonna offload it on my table. I don't want very much in here. I want this to be very light. And I'm again, just like I just did with the flat brush, I'm just starting at the top and kind of pulling those strokes downward. Now you don't even have to do this if you don't want to. You know, if you don't like the look of uh, the fuchsia on here, you definitely don't have to do it. I liked it because I thought it could look more like, like hair than what, you know, our traditional style is so I, I didn't put much I don't want much that's all I'm doing on that when it dries it'll dry a little bit darker uh, so it might not look like much right now but it will get a little darker so again same exact thing over here I have a lot of light pink in here so I'm just making sure to kind of offload that when I need to the whole reason I'm starting with this this color first is because if you notice I'm making a mess kind of behind this line so if I already had that black on here, I'd have to kind of come back in here and really touch up all that work I, I would have uh, messed up from starting first with a different color. So I'm just making sure I'm starting with uh, what I know is gonna create a nice little mess for me. So up close, I know it looks a little, might look a little weird, but back away, that's where it looks really good. So I'm gonna repeat the same exact thing on the cow with the bow. Now you don't necessarily have to wait for this to be, um, or you don't have to do this while it's wet. You can do it while it's dry. I did both earlier and I just preferred the look of doing it while it was wet.
Hold on, let me wash the brush out. I've got a bit much, got way too much light pink in there. I want it to be a little bit darker. Hey, Deborah. Hey, Jennifer. I'm so glad everybody's here. Hey, Chelsea. I'm sorry, y'all. I must be uh, thinking too hard about what I'm doing, so I'm not paying as much attention to comments, so my apologies. But I'm so glad you guys are all here. Jennifer, no sound. Try to hop out and hop back in. Hmm. I have you guys hooked up to my Wi-Fi, the good Wi-Fi. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but on my end, I've, everything's normal. Everything appears normal, so. Hopefully, if y'all don't have sound, at least on replay, you might have sound. I think I was saying earlier that Victoria, when she did her live, I could not have sound at all on my phone. In fact, I had to grab my iPad to be able to hop on and hear her because my phone wasn't working, even after shutting it down and everything. So. What are you guys thinking about this? Do you like the light whisk brush? Is that something that you guys would want to try? I don't know. I saw it and I thought, man, that looks really interesting. I bet you we could do some different stuff with that. Hence why I bought it. So, hey Pam, I'm so glad you're here. I didn't see you come in, but welcome. All right, y'all, so that's how I achieve the inside look on my ears on both of them. So now we're gonna go ahead and just finish out our base coating. So we're gonna get our black uh, and then we'll do our bow and our bandana, our red and our um, blue on those. Oh, lordy baby. I just uh, flung out black paint on me. Oh, my lid's not on all the way. <laughs> oh my goodness, typical. I didn't even paint that much today, but then somehow I'm covered in, in paint. Okay, trying to make sure I didn't spill paint on anything else. So, y'all are just talking up a storm and I feel like I'm not even, uh, is that a bug? Go away. <laughs> a bug on my phone uh but i feel like i'm not even doing a good job of keeping up let's see uh debbie okay so i guess a lot of y'all are having sound issues hmm. i'm sorry about that i'm not sure what that's all about i'm uh switching on over to black and i have just right my regular cotton mop brush this is just your regular black number 37. I typically like to do my black last, um, but on this one, I did my black second earlier because of drying time, and I was trying to move as fast as possible, but I'm just now realizing, obviously, I still have, I have a whole dry pair, so I don't have to move that fast. So normally I would do black last just because I like to reuse that same brush, and uh, once you get black in your brush, you really can't wash it out without going to the sink and washing it. That's just how I like to do things. Anybody who only has one brush that you're using, that's a little tip trick. Save the black for the end. That way you can just wash with water in between. Now, y'all, the same brush that I just used to do the ears, we're gonna use that again on the face with some black. Um, and I honestly, this was the first time I've ever used that brush. So I'm, I never, tried it before so now I'm, I'm curious to see how else I can use that in other patterns and like what else I can create with it it's kind of exciting finding a new brush that you have you like oops taking that a little high up you like the uh, you like the way that it works immediately as soon as I started using it I was like wow this one's this one's good I like this I like the look that it was giving me and not having to worry about you know needing to break it in or anything like that before achieving what uh, you need that brush to achieve. So, I was pleased. Oh, we got new Cotman br brushes in today. Yay, that's so awesome. And glitter, that is so good. I don't know, I have an iPad down here for comments, but for whatever reason, I don't, they don't come through on my iPad. So, I only see them if I look upwards. So any questions that are coming in, and I, if I'm missing them, I will uh, scroll back through here in a little bit and address anything I might have missed. I don't know 
know if y'all noticed, but I'm just loading paint down here on the nose. And that's because this, the top part of his face where I'm putting that black, there's not very much space. So it, it makes it a little bit harder for me to uh, have like a little platform to load my brush on when uh, there's not a wide space for me to do so. So I'm kind of using the bottom down here to load my brush and grab my paint and then bring it up top. I'm trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. I do real good at that. I'm gonna put a little bit here on the eyeball so that hopefully it'll dry by the time we need to outline. And then just kind of filling in the bottom. Switch it over. I repeat the same thing because obviously I still have uh, a wet brush that has black in it, so I'm going to use it again. Hope that's not too much. Uh oh, that looks like it might be a little bit much, but we'll see. I can always scrape it right back into the bottle. I've definitely been known to have to do that a time or two. A time or two meaning like, I don't know. 100, 200 times it feels like. I didn't mean to bring that that far up. That's okay. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I feel like I'm not being a great host tonight. I'm focusing too much. Uh, let's see, Deidre says, are the Cotman brushes the mop brushes? Yes, those are your mop brushes. And Debbie says, how do you go so fast and stay inside the lines? Um, I, I would say a lot of practice and um, doing it full time. You know, prior to Easter this year, this is all what I've done to make a living the last five years of my life. So um, I'm out here, I used to be out here painting every day because that was obviously, you know, my job. And so uh, when you're doing the same thing every day and you're doing multiples on a daily basis, you, you inevitably get faster at it. So it's kind of one of those things, like we all tell our kids, practice makes perfect, you know? You really gotta put in the work of the practice part and you will see the benefits um, from the knowledge and skill that you'll gain from that. It'll make you go a lot faster. The more you do, the faster you realize you can go. And you can ask anybody that's ever worked for me. I don't know if Melissa's working right now. But I'll be like, okay, we got to go faster. And they're like, faster? I'm like, yeah, we can do it. We can go faster. It's funny. But it, it's one of those things. Just give it a little time. You'll all get there. Hey, Tiffany, I'm so glad you're here. I didn't see you come in. Welcome. I hope you're doing good tonight. Thank you for tagging friends and having them come over and, and join. I see you guys, I posted these photos earlier because I wanted y'all to know what um, this would look like tonight. And uh, it seemed that you guys really loved it. I'm glad, I thought this one was a cute, cute uh, pattern. I thought I might've put too much black paint on here, but I think I'm safe. I actually might need a little more, let's see. Now, since obviously I know I'm gonna to touch all those lines up, I don't worry if I'm not, you know, on top of the line, touching the line. In fact, well, that time I went over top and I didn't wanna do that, so I'm gonna do a little cleanup on that. Uh, but as y'all can see, I don't try to get exactly up to the lines. You can see a little bit of space in between because I know I'm gonna come back in there with my, uh, with my script liner, so, I don't so much worry about that, and I think that's something that's helpful to help you move quickly, is because I'm just worried about getting this brush close enough that when I put my mop brush down, I know that that'll fill in any gaps uh, that might be there. So as far as black, I'm just double checking, because I'm good at missing stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and put that brush up. The only thing I have left to do is uh, the tops right quick, get my colors on there. And then we can move on to the dry set that I have uh, waiting on us. So this one is just your red number 20. 
and I'm just gonna do my sides really quick and get a quick coat on top. Don't need to be perfect. It's a, we're gonna still put some shading on here and then we're also gonna put uh, polka dots on here. Now you of course don't have to do polka dots. You don't even have to do it red. You can do whatever you want, but I love the red and blue together. So that's why I decided to go with these colors. I always think I, I might get enough paint, but the more, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when you do your sides, it's like you use a lot of paint on them sides. A lot more than you kind of realize. Let's see. Uh, hey, Joy, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Deidre says, uh, do you and your mom paint all the yard art that y'all sell or do y'all have other painters also? Deidre, we are the only painters. Uh, my parents now do some vinyl stuff, you know, so we do that, but we are the only two people. So everything that you see at the store is made at, at her house and her shop or it's made at my house and my shop. Um, we keep it to where it's just uh, the two of us taking care of you guys. Now we do have people that work for us, that help us, you know, but it's all produced by us. No outsiders. Years ago, we used to have other people that um, painted and sold there, but over the years, there's been a lot of them that have passed away or moved or other you know, circumstances took place. So they were no longer able to uh, paint anymore. So, all right, this one's done as far as my base coat in the very beginning part uh, of the shading of the ears. And let me just move him out of the way because I don't have much space. And now this one, the only thing I have left to do is uh, get my brilliant blue put on, the base of the bow that I did. So uh, let me see, this one's brilliant blue number five. So same thing, I'm still using that Cotman mop brush. Y'all, uh, Hobby Lobby used to sell these and when I went in there last week, they didn't have them anymore. I was hoping to be able to show them to you guys uh, if, in store, but I'm not sure if they don't sell them or if it might just be my Hobby Lobby. But I think that uh, we, do, we did get some in, so at least we have them in stock. Finally, I know we've been out of those for, I don't know, maybe a month or so. Seems like it's been a while. I don't have to worry about getting all the way down in that corner over here because my shader is going to get down in that corner. So if it's not perfect, I already know that's going to get covered up too. Ta-da! All right, your base coat on the bow cow is done. So let me move this one right quick and then we'll get started on uh, finishing the dry one. I've got some 10 foot tables in my shop, but the table I'm working on is your, I guess your standard six foot, eight foot, I'm not sure. But I think I need to switch this table with a 10 foot one because it's, it is not big enough when I have four pieces up here. All right, so here's the dry version of what we just did. The only thing, I did put a little bit of black on the eyeballs right before I went live because I wanted them to try to be um, dry so we could do our little white dots, but if they're not, that's okay. Y'all know I'm gonna have to do the white dots anyways. Okay, so the, what did I start with? I'm going to put a little shade on my red and then we're gonna go right into outlining the black. And then when we're outlining the black, that's when we're gonna do, use our whisk brush again, our quarter inch whisk, and uh, come in here in the center of his eyes to do the little hair like pieces. So first let me do, my red so this one's just my shading red uh, number 23 I need to add a little bit of water I think I didn't get my cap on very well so it's kind of gummy you know what I might just need oh, new paint in here too and then a little bit of water 
You don't, I did put um, polka dots on top of the shading. I personally like the shading underneath the polka dots. Kind of that contrast that it gives you. Um, you don't have to shade this if you didn't want to. You know, since you do have the polka dots there, you already have something that's, you know, visually appealing to the eye. But I think it adds that other dimension when you have the shading underneath your polka dots. Or, yeah, shading. I was about to say, did I say polka dots underneath shading? No, shading underneath polka dots. So I'm just using my uh, flat shader. This one is going to be along the lines of a 12, a number 12 shader. sure this is going to be dry by the time we do polka dots but we can hope for it because I didn't bring my um, blow dryer out so that's going to be it on his shading I'm going to just stick her his him her stick her aside and I'm going to do the blue right quick and let that try to dry a little bit I'm going to shade my blue and then we'll move on to black on both of them and then all we have left is the outlining of the black. And then you do your wisp brush a little bit and then white highlights and you're done. Uh, I felt like this pattern is one of the easier ones. I mean, we obviously do have some patterns that uh, require much more uh, time, you know, time, colors, skill, that sort of thing. But I really thought this one uh, was on the easier side. If you're new, you're a beginner, this is one that I think that you could be successful at. It's not difficult. All right, y'all, I'm getting just the navy blue number six. This is the same exact brush I just used on the red. I just washed it out in a little bit of water. I'm kind of loading that triangle corner. I don't think I showed y'all that on my uh, shading red. But just loading that corner and following along with the perimeter line. Now I'm starting on that outside and coming inward because when I'm coming inward, I'm, I'm actually going into uh, the next section over. So if I do that on both sides and I go over top the one that's meant to be underneath, then every time I come over top of that line, you see I have shading in four different spots already in that circle. I can now just do that circle and clean up all those lines and then you don't see any brush strokes kind of popping out hanging out you kind of covered all of those pop out brush strokes so kind of a little tip um, when you shade that might help all right y'all as far as a shading brush i'm done the only two brushes i'm going to be using now are my script liner and i'm going to grab that wisp brush again so now what we're going to do first is go ahead and outline with black uh, and then that way when I pull out my brush, I'm going to just use the black I've already put down to do the wisps. So, all right. So let me see. Uh, I, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, Hobby Lobby's having issues with supply. Yeah, I think everybody's having issues getting supplies. Debbie says she thinks it looks better with the shading. I totally agree. And they all take time for you. Yes, I get that. They do take time. And you know what? Honestly, the first time I ever do something, it always takes me more time. Uh, but you know me, once I do it once, I'm going to do it 50 more times. So I get faster after the initial first time. But the initial first time always takes me an extended amount of time. Honestly, the half of that bottle that I have is just picking colors. You know how hard it is to pick colors on something new? Oh, I just flip back and forth too much. So you know, big decisions. All right, so Deidre says, so when you load the corner of your brush, do you let the side without paint hang over the side or facing inward? Uh, I don't have any flat ones that are dry, Deidre, but say this was a flat brush, I'm gonna load the corner of this right here, like a triangle, and I take that triangle up against the line. So your dry side is almost Sorry, your dry side would almost, if this is your wet side, your dry side's almost up in the air uh, like that. But it also depends, because sometimes if I want a thin line, then I actually use that dry side the whole time, but I turn the brush the other direction. 
But the way that I just did it, that thinner side is, is almost tilted uh, in a diagonal form and being all, a little bit up in the air, not much. I hope that that explanation made sense. Yeah, that's a great question. I love you guys asking questions. I love it, I love it, I love it. You keep them coming. All right, so I'm gonna actually switch over and try to give that bow a little bit of time to dry and maybe hope that Zach or Carly will come outside and I can send somebody to go grab me a, a, a blow dryer. But if not, we're just gonna make do. So I'm just gonna get started. Uh, this is just my script liner number four and some black paint. And at this moment, all I'm doing is following those lines, your etch lines, the lines that are already there for you. going to follow those out on the whole piece. Now that kind of uh, hair look that I ended up doing on the face right here between the eyes, I attempted it as well down here on the bottom and it didn't look good. So I repainted it earlier. I think I even have a picture if anybody's wanting to know what that did look like to for you to maybe try that. But I loved the look of it on the ears and then right here in between the eyes. Okay. Alrighty. And same exact thing. How are you guys feeling about outlining? Has it become any easier for you guys? Have you found anything that is helpful, like adding water, or maybe you've tried a different brush that you like? I'm curious to know how you guys are feeling about that. Because I know outlining and shading are, are two things that, you know, can seem a little overwhelming. So anytime you find something that is like, oh man, that was super helpful. I'd love to hear about that. Okay, let's see. Now when I come in here and I do these polka dots, it might look a little eh, funky. I might, I might not be able to do them fully all the way around because this is really, really wet. We're gonna do our best to get through it. Outlining is your beast, Phaedra. That is awesome. I'm glad, or beast is in like, you got it? Or like beast is in, you're terrified of it. But I'm thinking that is in like, you're working it, you got it. And outlining seems to be easier than shading, Debbie. You know, honestly, I want to say that that ended up being the same for me as well, or how I felt uh, in my own confidence of myself when I was doing it. Um, now it's a lot easier, you know, but I honestly can't say that I fully felt comfortable with the way I paint until I started doing it full time, until I left teaching in 2015 and, and literally did this full time as a, as a job. That's when I, my skill set for me, in my own opinion, uh, you know, drastically changed and I felt like I, I really learned a lot. I think that's probably too because I was working at it every day. So if I'm working at it every day and I'm not learning, then that would be an issue. <laughs> like something's not right. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just go outline the bottom right quick. And then we're gonna grab our whisk brush and go ahead and do the lines. Uh, in between his eyes, her eyes, him, her. I'm gonna say if it's got a bow and a bandana, they're probably girls, huh? I'm honestly just kind of following these lines right now on the inside part of it. I'm not trying to surpass that line. So I kind of dig my brush down in the groove or not, not terribly hard, but you know, kind of find that groove and let my brush just follow it through. And um, that's why you can see these lines or my strokes can be a lot, you know, pretty long sometimes, not all the time. 
just find your groove inside of those lines and let your brush take you. All right, now, while this is wet, I'm gonna do the same exact thing with that half inch flat whisk. Let me grab it out of my water right quick. got to clean this out a little bit. I think I need to move my water over here a little down lower so I can see in it. I showed everybody at the beginning, but anybody who just came on, this is a half inch uh, flat whisk. I got it at Hobby Lobby. Uh, it was originally $8, but they had it marked off, uh, marked half off for four bucks last week. So I picked it up and thought I'd play with it. And this is what I did. So now I already have some paint on here. I might go ahead and just dip the tips. And when I mean the tips, only that little tip that's kind of has those cut pieces, just a little bit, you don't need much. And then I tried to give it like a downward uh, kind of effect. So I'm barely, I'm not giving it pressure. I'm kind of setting the brush and just pulling it out a little bit, light, wispy. Kind of feathery motions and you know let the brush kind of do the work for you you can do these as short or as long as you like hold on i gotta look at it from this direction and make sure that the length looks good because it's hard to it's hard to see yeah i think that looks okay to me What do you guys think? That's exactly how I achieved that look. Now I am going to take the same. I'm going to leave the black that I already have on here and just do a very, very, very lightly over top my ears. I want it to be barely, you know, not, I think I'm only doing maybe like one swipe for every width that my brush comes down. I'm just pulling one swipe. I'm not pulling multiple swipes. You kind of saw me pull multiple swipes here. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to keep it real light. Those, I ended up having some kind of thicker lines almost coming through. So now I'm just trying to match that a little bit. It's kind of hard once you do that. That's all I did. Y'all, I told y'all this is easy. This is super easy. It is so stinking cute. We're gonna repeat the same exact thing over here with the cow and the bow. So you're actually getting that opportunity to watch the same exact process twice. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that's super helpful for me. Cause sometimes when I watch other people that do painting videos, um, you know, they go through something and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did you do? I can't tell what you did because they go so fast. Uh, so the good thing about having two of the same kind of patterns and we're achieving the same look is that you're kind of getting double duty on uh, lessons here. So, oh, Deidre, Deidre, Debbie, Pam, Joy, thank you guys, Debra, y'all are so sweet. Y'all all liked it. Okay, I'm repeating the same exact thing. I'm gonna start with my outline and tr follow my lines, trace my lines really is all I'm doing. Now the one with the bow, that, or the one with the bandana that we just finished, the only thing I have left to do on him is, is white, that's it. Other than that, he's done. And the polka dots, but the polka dots are white, so I kind of consider that to be part of it. Ah. I came over a little bit on that eyeball, but that's okay. Wipe it off, keep going. Good thing about this is it's paint. So even if it's, you make a big old mess and you can't wipe it off, that's okay. You can always wait on it to dry and then paint over it. It's the beauty of messing up when you're using this. You can, it's fixable. I don't know if y'all notice, but whenever I'm outlining eyeballs, I always get really quiet because I am not the best at circles and I 
can sometimes do a really good job of uh, hopping outside of those lines and making it a big blob and then trying to wipe it up and then making the blob bigger and bigger and bigger. So when I do eyeballs, I try to go a little bit slower just to make sure that I'm uh, staying where I need to be. This navy blue underneath here is still really wet, so I have a lot of paint separating right now. If it wasn't kind of muggy out here and the paint underneath here wasn't wet, I don't think I'd have that issue because I just Windex these, but it happens. It's kind of a, I don't think the humidity is particularly high, but it just feels muggy. really separating only on the navy too hmm that's kind of weird I really think it's just too wet <sighs> oh Debbie you watch the videos over and over do you really y'all I, I have a, a, a confession I do watch the videos after I after I record them I do watch myself because I want to make sure I try to learn because you know how much, how many times that I, after I get done with the live, I'm like, darn it, I wanted to say this, or I wanted to teach that, or I should have pointed X, Y, Z out. And so I try to kind of watch to learn on when I know I'm making, or I made a mistake mentally, you know, that I feel like, hey, darn it, I should have said something, or I should have done this. Uh, that's kind of that time where I can look back and reflect, and, and I want to be a better teacher for you guys. So I do watch my own videos. <laughs> But I like hearing that you guys enjoy them. I hope they're helpful. I, I tend to become a talker and, and go on little tangents, so I don't know that that's always helpful. I'm almost done. Don't have much more to go. Oh, I'm keeping everybody in the camera view. And just flip them on around. Now y'all, whenever this dries, I'm definitely gonna have to come back and fix this navy blue. It really do it doesn't look very good at all right now. Uh, but I can't do anything more until it dries up to fix that. So I'll show y'all what that looks like here in a minute and why the humidity and you know, the, what the weather's like outside can really affect, um, what the paint does. chunk okay now my black outline's done let me go ahead and wash my brush right quick let me show you all that paint separating on the blue can you guys see what that looks like up here maybe if anybody's tried to paint and they didn't windex you probably saw that you'll also see that when it's humid outside uh, so a lot of times when it rains I don't paint because it's humid and it's muggy and it does that to my paint. So it's never something, you know, when you're working hard on something and you're trying to do an end, the end part of a project and the weather's messing it up, you know, it's one of those things, just put it away until the weather gets better. But, you know, we had to go on for the sake of our calendar tonight. We're just gonna push through it and I'll fix what I have to fix at the end. So, hey Terry, I didn't even see you come in, honey. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, Deidre, you like this uh, wispy hair? Like, girl, now that I found this brush, there's a million things I'm gonna have to try this with. I'm loving it, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. Phaedra says that you think you do a good job, or you think that I do a good job explaining. Well, thank you so much, Phaedra, I'm glad to hear that. Deborah, I need to name my cows. I love that idea, I need some help. Give me some, give me some names, and I will totally change their name. That would be fantastic to have names for some of these guys instead of just cow face or like the pig, pig face, you know, what do you really, I don't know what else to call it, but 
If I had a name for it, I would totally do that. So send me some suggestions. I'd love to hear that. Uh, let's see, Debbie, uh, when you just painted, how many could you get done in a day? Oh, uh, something this size? Mm, 30, 40, something like that, a lot. It, it all depends on size wise. There's some, you know, like these, um, I have some two foot candy canes that have like a green bow. Um, one year, not last year, but the year before that in Colorado, I painted a hundred of them in a day. Now that was with help. I did have other girls helping me, but we kind of form a, a assembly line style. Okay, so I'm seeing Betsy, Bessie, I love it, Betsy, Bossy. Oh, I love it, I love it, Bessie. All right, y'all, maybe we're gonna have to name these, these cuties. I think so. I love that idea, Deborah. Thank you so much for that. All right, y'all. I'm just using that black that's already there from me doing my outline and just pulling my wisps through just a little bit. I don't want to be too much. Quite honestly, you could probably even do the, or uh, not probably, but you could definitely do this with white too. Um, I just didn't do that. So at this point, it'd be a little too late I already, or until I it'd have to dry and then I could come back with white. But that wouldn't be a bad idea to do the white maybe after you do the dark pink and then do black last. I think that would look really cute. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing right here. I'm not even loading any more paint. I'm just kind of using what's already given to me. Bessie, Bossy, whatever their names are, are going to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and put that flat wisp up and switch right back over to my script liner. Grab a little bit of white that already is watered down. Hey, Heather, I'm sorry. I don't even think I got to say hello to you or Kimberly. I might not have said hello up to y'all. I don't recall. So hello. I'm glad you guys are here hanging out. All right, so I'm just loading up a little bit of white and gonna kind of come in here and bring some shading strokes in here and I didn't. I might just do that right quick, hold on. I really prefer shading strokes inside of my bows. Let me grab this brush back out of my water. I don't know what it is, but um, whenever I have some spots that might be a little bit wider, I do like my shading strokes in there. See, it's not much, but to me it makes a difference. Now I can be done with that shader. Now I will also come back in here whenever I touch that black up and I'll do a little black wisp as well on that. I wanna make sure I got you guys fully, there we go. I want y'all to be able to see. Now on here, I didn't do, uh, I really kept my brush very, very light, wispy. I'm not trying to follow along that edge or really do too much. I really didn't want um, thick lines. So I'm really ba barely, barely putting that brush down and allowing it to take me. Let me do a little dot in the eye. This eye is a lot wetter than this one, so it might look a little bit funky, but I think it looks okay. We can always touch that up at the end, or when it's dry as well. A lot of times whenever these are dry, I do have to come in here and do something. I'm good at doing making boo-boos.
Now, I put a lot of paint on there to get inside of them nostrils because I wanted to get down into that carving, but I'm gonna actually wipe a lot of that back off to kind of give me some wispy lines on the inside. I don't like my lines to be very thick. So this one with the bow is done, completely done. I will have to do touch-ups, but as far as the look that I'm achieving, that one's done, so. Uh, let's see, Kimberly's, uh, hey Lynn, I'm so glad you came in to hang out, honey. I hope you're well. Uh, let's see, Kimberly said, when you do shading or outline, do you water down your paint? Me? Yes, I always do. Um, for me personally, that I like how my brush glides. Um, I like the movement that I get, the fluidity that I get. My brush doesn't drag as much. And so that's just what I like. Everybody's different. So, you know, I, I like to put a lot of water, especially when I do my outlining. Anything I use a script liner with has a ton of water in it. But you know, not every artist is gonna feel the same. Maybe other people won't like that. But I do personally like it. I'm gonna say to play with it and whatever you find to be best for you, whatever you're most comfortable with, go with that. But it's definitely something if you're feeling like you're maybe struggling um, getting paint to smooth out or achieving a certain look, try to uh, add a couple of drops. Don't put too much because you, once you get too much, then you have to add more paint. Uh, you know, so just start with a little bit and play with it. I'm gonna leave that bow alone because I am gonna do some polka dots here in just a minute. Now I'm gonna flip him around, her around, and f finish up their nostrils. I, I dripped some paint on here earlier and missed it. That'll need a little touch up too. care for the drag that I just got out of that but it's one of those things let it dry and if you didn't care for a certain stroke that you got you could always fix it so this is without polka dots he's done she's done all that she's got left is polka dots so I'm just gonna actually grab my uh, my little dauber these are those uh, Martha Stewart ones that I use all the time constantly and I'm using the smallest one. It says it's a half inch, but y'all, it seems a lot smaller than a half inch to me. Uh, I don't have a plate again, so I might actually use the lid. Do some of this. Now that black is really wet, but I wouldn't mind uh, while doing this actually getting over top of that. But since mine's wet, I can't do that right now without mixing a bunch of color and I don't want to mix colors, so. I'm going to stay within kind of space that's all dry. Truthfully, you could have done these um, polka dots earlier, like after you shaded, but before you outline. But I didn't think of it, so therefore I got it done at the end. So it was kind of a little too late by the time I did it. So let's see, it seems to flow better. Uh, okay, so you're having gliding issues, you need to water it down. Yes, oh, Kimberly, okay, so I'm sorry, I didn't see all those other questions. Yeah, definitely try the water part to get your uh, brush and your paint to flow a little bit better. Oh, Deborah, you like Molly and Abby? I love that too. We might have to post a little poll and get you guys to uh, vote for a name. I love that idea. Hi, baby. Looks good. Thank you. Carly just came out. She's sitting here watching me paint. It's pretty satisfying. I know. I used to always sit and watch my mom paint. I loved it. I always felt like she was just so um, over the top fantastic at painting, you know, when I was younger and I would watch her. I still think that now, don't get me wrong. 
Um, but it was one of those things that it was just uh, mesmerizing to watch her paint. I loved it. Miss Debbie says hi, Carly. Hi. <laughs> she says hello. And so, Kimberly, the dots, I did do it with watered down paint only because um, this is what I had and it's already watered down. And it worked just fine, but you don't have to water down paint for your polka dots. In fact, I typically don't. Uh, but it was the ease of, I already had this cup right here and I already had it open. So I went ahead and used it. You don't have to do that. Typically I use a plate with not watered down paint, but I didn't bring a plate. So I was improvising tonight. All right, y'all, that is my finished look. Let me give you guys another peek at it. Looks amazing. Thank you. So that is your bandana. And then, here is your bow. I love how these guys turned out. Um, I think this is gonna be the first set of stuff that we painted together uh, here in our painters club that I'm actually gonna put in my front yard for myself. Cause I have a set now for the store and I think this set will be for me. Cause I just think they're cute. Would y'all believe that I paint this stuff for a living and I don't have any in my yard? Yeah, it's kind of nuts. It's sad. I really need to get some. It's usually But Christmas. we don't. <laughs> it's just not something you think about. Hey, y'all, too. It's June, and I still have a Christmas, Christmas decorations. decorations. I feel no like lie. I Christmas tree <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I don't. You know, I kind of just figured we're at June, so why take it down? I mean, December's not that far. Uh, we took down our tree, but all of my garland and wreaths are still up. And the problem is they're up very high, like 12 feet up in the air because we have a really big window. And so I don't do ladders, so therefore they haven't come down. It's probably. So, you know, it's all crazy. Yeah, Danae, Danae was over here for, we had a little paint party <laughs> with some friends uh, and she came over a couple of weeks ago and yes, she can attest to the fact that my Christmas decorations are still up. <laughs> now I did tell Zach he's got to get my one down off my front door to put on my wall behind me for Christmas in July. And I also have like a little four foot tree that we're gonna put back here behind so me. because Christmas, Christmas is my favorite. I have to get all ready for our Christmas in July. You'll have no idea how excited about that I am. I think I might even need like a Christmas hat and some Christmas music playing in the background just for the effects, you know, but we shall see. I'm so excited. But I hope you guys liked these cows. Uh, I feel like I've just been Miss Chatty Cathy talking y'all's ear off. Um, I am actually going to be taking a break the next couple of days. Some of you guys know we were supposed to be leaving for Jamaica for our wedding today, um, but COVID happened. And so um, we will typically be doing all of our lives on Thursdays, but I wanted to do ours today because Zach and I are going to try to get away um, for a little quick getaway this weekend. So I don't plan on being around uh, work-wise. So if you guys don't see me for a couple of days, just we're trying to get some, take a little break. Uh, but I think my, um, we have a tutorial in our Yard Order Academy on Monday for the Flamingos. So that one is your paid membership group. Uh, that's $22 a month right now. And that's kind of where we go, uh, we dive deeper into the painting process and we uh, will have uh, live tutorials in there that we go much more in depth over things. We also have like about 30 videos already recorded for you guys that we will be sending out to those in the Academy. Uh, that cover all sorts of stuff, um, shading, outlining, the materials that we use, how you can create your own patterns, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So if you're interested in that, that's $22 a month and that's at Yarded Academy. And as well as if you sign up for that, you do get 15% off of all blanks. So doors are only open till Friday and then they're closed for the next three months. So if you guys are interested, I hope that you guys uh, check it out and join us over there. We're gonna have so much fun as well as a Zoom party every month together. So that's going to be fun. Kimberly said, so when is the wedding now? Unfortunately, I don't have, we have no date set. Um, I think it's gonna just be a JP kind of thing at the moment. And in the future, we'll end up having a ceremony uh, when we can do that. But you know, at this moment with COVID going on and all of this, I, I don't even know when to try to plan it or when to try to reschedule. Um, it would have to be next year because any time that's past summer for us, it becomes our busy season. So we knew we couldn't, you know, push it off to the end of the year because that's when we're the busiest. And so summer's really our only option as far as Carly's school schedule. And then 
our um, our business and our seasons that we you know work through. So it wasn't going to happen this summer, so therefore it's just postponed at this moment. So it's okay. We're going to make the best of it. Uh, but you know, we're all kind of in this together. There's been so many other people who've had to cancel all sorts of stuff too. Uh, we had another friend that was supposed to get married this Friday that had to cancel her wedding too. So I'm sad about it for everybody, but there's a lot of people in my situation, so I don't feel, I don't feel like I should be complaining. Like, you know, I'm not the only one. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Anybody who's interested in these blanks, they are online at yardarest.com, and they are also loaded in this store. Anybody who's placed any online orders, they are already ready to go to be picked up. So if you are, uh, you know, trying to wait a couple of days, you don't need to wait. Just head on into the store after you do an online uh, order and you can go pick up almost immediately. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all hanging out and y'all send me the pictures of y'all's cows after you do them. I cannot wait to see. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.